Hi, good morning. I'm sorry I missed you. Um, just to let you know, I'm not a telemarketer, but I am doing community work. We're calling our neighbors to offer some encouragement in light of world conditions. A lot of people are feeling um, high amounts of stress and anxiety, and we just wanted to give them um, some hope. You know that the Bible does uh, give us hope of a better future. We we're highlighting Scripture, Revelation chapter 21:4. Uh, what God promises to remove any pain, suffering, and even death to be gone. That the things that we're dealing with today will be gone forever. I encourage you to check that out in your own Bible. Um, and also you're invited to look at our free website. And there you can find uh, videos for uh, people of all ages, Bible study programs, get your questions answered. There's so much on there. I know you'll enjoy it. Just take a look at it. Um, if you have any questions, you're free to call me back at this number. I'd love to speak with you. Have a nice day. Um, good morning. I'm sorry I missed you. Um, just to let you know, I'm not a telemarketer, but I am doing community work. We're calling our neighbors to offer some encouragement. Um, and also, you're invited to look at our free website, and there you can find uh, videos for uh, pain, suffering, and even death. The high amounts of stress and anxiety does uh, give us hope of a better future. If the things that we're dealing with today will be gone forever, I encourage you to get your questions answered, and there you can find uh, programs. And there you can find um, programs, and there you can find um, programs, and there you can find um, high amounts of stress and anxiety, high amounts of stress and anxiety. Um, and also you're invited to look at our free website, and there you can find um, videos for uh, pain, suffering, and death. But it's how you must hope for a better future. Anything that we're doing with today will be gone forever. I encourage you to get your questions answered, and then you can find um, programs. And there you can find uh, programs. And there you can find uh, programs. Um, you to become a programmer, you do have to have some knowledge of. The languages. Now, the languages. The, the languages of the machine. Reach out. Reach out. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. I'll let this day on the outside. Outside. 1700 hours on the downside. Downside. Tell me what's inside. What's inside. So I can feed from your mind. Mind. And my research you call your life. Your life. to know the, the language of the machine. And that's your job, you know that language of the machine. Right. Uh, what, how would you describe the qualifications for a job as a programmer? Well, math. 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 Um, now you don't mean arithmetic yet. Well, uh, programming is basic arithmetic. It is. It's just uh, add one, subtract two, multiply by three, multiply by four. But uh, math, math is good in this because it turns your mind in a lot of sequence. Mm -hmm. These programs are written out in a way that you and I would talk. Yeah. They're put into the machine. Um, you, to become a programmer, you do have to have some 
knowledge of the languages. Now, the languages. The, the languages of the machine. Ah. Because uh, you can't just stay with one machine because if you do, you're dead. That seems to be characteristic of this whole thing, just a terrific movement. Right, it's just, it's a fast movement. And they would be able to just talk to the machine. Tell it what I want. Yeah. And they write the program for me. Yeah. But you'd still have to create the program. Right. This is well, this it still comes right down to the human being. It's, uh, a programmer, a machine, doesn't think. A machine does what it's told to do. So you have to have a program to tell it what it's
where programmers 
logic sequences. What, what, can you give me an example? Uh, take a payroll. If you take a simple payroll, you go through the, uh, you'd have everybody on a magnetic tape. Their jobs would be in a card format, mm -hmm. in a punch card. Uh, their hours, their wages. You put these hours and wages through a play program which is designed to add, subtract, multiply, divide. It will compute their wages, match with their name on the tape, mm -hmm. create a second tape which is made from your original tape with the names, your computed wages and, uh, from the cards, mm -hmm. and then it would create a second tape with all this information. From this third tape, you could just run right through and run your paychecks. Well, who decides um, uh, what you multiply by, what you divide by? This is uh, decided by the payroll department upstairs, or the who do the um, timekeeping. Mm -hmm. The cards are punched by the by uh, key punchers from reports supplied by the timekeepers. Mm -hmm. See, in programming. You always must have a document. Your original source is a document. So you go from a document into a punch card. That document is what you refer to as the thing that's done manually. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Now, someday we can do away with timekeepers, oh, with new machines. With the guy just walk up and tell his machine what, who he is? Is that right? Well, no, <laughs> not, not, not to tell him who he is, but uh, these machines uh -huh. will read off of, off of just a piece of paper that I have here in front of me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if you take that, read it, and create tape just from a piece of paper and eliminate cards altogether, punch cards. And now where do you come in on this, this process that you described? Well, uh, my position is programmer and data supervisor. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the programming, uh, this would be in a new language format, but what we're doing now is what is co called COBOL programming, which is Common Ordinary Business Language, short for that, mm -hmm. COBOL. It's hard to explain the programming. Uh, mm -hmm. It's breaking, it's breaking down the, the job. If you would take a problem mm -hmm. and sit down and you would say, John Doe, so-and-so, mm -hmm. identification number, so-and-so, mm -hmm. work 36 hours. Yeah. Uh, at $2.45.6 an hour. And you would have a comptometer and you'd figure that out and write it in. Whereas I would take this and I would say, uh, John Doe, uh, did he, does he work, this is uh, in a flow charting type of sequence, um, does he work? You have two choices, yes or no, uh -huh. yes, 
from there, you go down are his earning wage or salary. Then you have you have another split off there where it can be either a wage or a salary. So now this he goes off to a wage. So now that goes into another cycle of the program where um, how many hours does he work? And then this will say multiply the hours by the wage. Ah. And it'll say, if he works 36 hours, it'll say, um, it'll put a 36 into the machine, and the machine will just add his wage 36 times. It'll start at 36 until it gets down to zero and stop, and that'll be his wage. And this is all done in fractions of a second. Oh. Now, can you just, uh, you as programmer, do you, uh, and the way I understand it, it's like trying to describe this guy by a series of pigeonholes or categories uh, and uh, track them down in detective fashion, uh, uh, description of well, certain records of uh -huh. somebody or something. Yeah. The way they used to do it on the old uh, 407, which you used to see on the quiz shows, uh -huh. where they put in the cards and the cards come out in 10 different uh, pockets. Yeah. Well, now they have a 1440 disk file system, which is uh, random access. Random access means it can go in and pick out anything at any time. All this is on huge disks. We use ours primarily for car tracing, railroad car tracing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can, uh, you what they do is... lost or something. Well, I know if somebody wants to know where their shipment is, huh. we can tell them at any time. We have a console in front of us where we can type and make inquiries into the disk. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you have to, you have to know the, the language of the machine. And that's your job. You know that language of the machine. Right. I see. You have to, to communicate with the machine. You have well, in the cobalt language is what is known as common ordinary business orientated or common business orientated language. Uh -huh. um, these programs are written out in the way that you and I would talk. Yeah. They're put into the machine with a supplied. Uh, COBOL processor in the form of a card. And card. But your uh, your cards going in have to be precise. And uh, one programmer will program a problem differently than that. No two programmers program a job the same way. So the programmer has to be adept at taking and you know, making parts out of it. Uh, like you have a big hole. Right, right. You just evaluation of the problem. Yeah. Break it down as simple as possible. How would you describe your routine? You start at four o'clock in the afternoon. Four in the afternoon, yes. Yeah. We work twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Our machines are never down. Oh I see. Unless they're for repairs and maintenance. Is it typical? It's around the clock? No, not of the railroads where the uh, most railroads work two ships. And what other kind of industries are these machines used? And then your job? Oh, you? the old insurance banks. That's where oh. banks have it. Any, any and every industry can use it. Small, small businesses okay. use it. Banks rent out machine tanks to small businesses. Well, let's go back to your day. Say you come in here. What's, mm -hmm. what is your job? Well, uh, he may have been working in the same program for a week or two. And if it was the beginning of a new program, he would sit down and he would, he would investigate the job thoroughly, find out all he could about the job, what has to be done, how this job can be taken from manual work to machines. And he'd divide his job up into some different divisions of, of uh, work that he wants done. And he'd write down all the information, the format of the job, yeah. what has to go into the job, what is supposed to come out of the job, and then he goes into the actual work in the machine. What he wants the machine to do. Mm -hmm. Then from that, he would draw a flow chart, which is uh, it's a visual Everything. chart of just exactly what the machine is doing. Sounds like you are working with this thing. Well, with with other people. Well, no, you work with other people because there are teams, and there's maybe four people in the team. There are 25 programmers here because. One team uh, will be for uh, management of disbursement. Another team will be for management of expense of uh, revenue. Okay. Another team will be for car service. Another team will be for systems. And uh, 
there are five teams of four on each team, and then there are five of us that who are programmers and uh, supervisor over the computer operation. As far as routine, it doesn't seem like there's any routine. No, there's nothing uh, routine or boring about the job at all because uh, every day is something new. They're coming up with new programs, new jobs. Well, no, it's all so challenging. There are, are deadlines. Well, how many hours do you work? I average about 48. 48 hours. Now the supervisor, does she work in 48 hours? Well, sometimes they work more than that because they come in, uh, they want to test jobs to test their, their programs. So they have to come in at night time. They have to come in on Saturdays and Sundays when there's not uh, a heavy flow of work. Uh, Nobody really worries about the time as long as they get the job done. I see. This is the thing, getting a problem, getting it done, getting it right. We had a job last week. The president of the railroad uh, promised a, uh, a report to the law department. <laughs> and he had no idea what went into this report, how much work it involved. And it took 10 people a day and a half working straight through about 24 straight hours of computer time. Wear yourself down working too many hours. Uh, working with all of these big problems, you look tired. And, oh, sure, you get this tired feeling. And then you're doing nothing physical. You're not working, you're not doing any physical labor or anything like that, but you're, it's mental, uh, mental labor. It's sometimes mental labor is a lot more than that physical labor. Uh, what, how would you describe the qualifications for a job? Well, math. Math. Uh, yeah. Now you don't mean arithmetic. Well, uh, programming is basic arithmetic. It is. It's just uh, add one, subtract two, multiply by three, divide by four. But uh, math, math is good in this because it trains your mind in a lot of sequence. Not really. Um, you, to become a programmer, you do have to have some knowledge of the languages. Now, languages. The, the languages of the machine. Ah, the COBOL, Fortran, autocoder languages. There are three or four different uh, languages. Now, you don't think there's something nice? No, no, I don't think so. You can pick it up in college. Or you can, uh, maybe the company you're working for would, would send you to a special school. The first is of this, of these schools is to learn the language, basically. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, they'll teach you the basic fundamentals of programming. They'll teach you the language, how to talk to the machine in English, so that the machine will talk back to you in machine language. Is there a, a personality type that finds uh, their way to, or its way to, to be a programmer? Well, they say there is, but, uh, I looked around at the other programmers and none of us were like, maybe if uh, we all sat down and took a personality test or a, uh, a certain test, uh, maybe we'd all come out the same, I don't know, but, uh... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Utility. Uh, well then, a person could begin to think about this position after high school. They, uh, in other words, he wouldn't have to go for a, a college degree. No, you wouldn't have to go for a college degree. Uh, many large companies wouldn't hire them if you had a college degree. But if uh, the person could get into the field, be into the field two, three years, you could probably take uh, that out of the machine operator. And then take the final of the machine, the operation of the machine, and then go into, uh, into the programming for the company. Or maybe, uh, even learning it on the you know, by himself, reading the book, reading the manual of, uh, of these machines. Mm -hmm. This is one way, college would be... Well, if, you, if you wanted to win with, with the big company, Prudential, U.S. Steel, um, Dow Chemical, 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 Dow
I uh, took a course to be artist. We, we, were, we were programming in sports band and auto sports. And we had to go learn this cobalt. And now we're coming out with a, with a bigger and a better machine that's called the Nigerian 360 and this little thing. Nigerian language. Do you like to do school? Oh, yeah. Yes. Ah. Uh, uh, you can't just stay with one machine because it can do your data. That seems to be characteristic of this whole thing. It's just a terrific movement. Right. It's, just, it's a fast movement. Yeah, five years ago, a programmer wired for He made a program of um, nothing at all, like we're writing today. You don't know what you'll be doing 10 years from now. 10 years from now, uh, I may be able to just talk to him and see what I want. Yeah. And write the program for me. Yeah. But you still have to create the program. And right. this is so what it is. It still comes right down to the human being. Mm -hmm. uh, a programmer, a machine, does his thing. Of what it's told of it. And you have to have a program to tell it too. Would you say that the, um, the uh, page is good and the increments are good? Well, it depends on the company you're working for. As far as the pay level, what would you compare the programmer to in other fields? An industrial engineer. What is the difference between uh, data processing and programming? Or is it the same thing? The programmer is part of data, data processing. The, the actual working of the program. Mm -hmm. The program is, is, is aligned to the machine to process the data that it What are your aligned fields? Well, one would be a systems analysis or an efficiency expert. What, what would you say are the disadvantages of the program? Yeah. The long hours, the responsibility. Just, uh, the person is not one to accept responsibility or doesn't want to work. Not for him. Yeah. If he's the type of person that tries to do something that doesn't finish it, that's fair. <laughs> Very fair. Because you have to go all the way through. No matter how many hours or how hard it is, you got to keep it The introductory material on this tape was taken from the current edition of Occupational Outlook Handbook and is used with permission. The interviews were conducted in an informal manner to prompt spontaneous answers and comments. This technique was used with the intention of giving the listener a candid view of a programmer's actual working experiences. For more detailed information about this occupation, use the current edition of Occupational Outlook Handbook or consult appropriate professional societies and unions.